our training looks like this. We have an F. We have determined the shape of that F, so to speak, okay, from what universe it consists of. It has theta coming in. And then we also have x coming in as input. The output of f we are going to call y hat. Okay? y hat to signify that it's an approximation to y. So it is our estimated output rather than our known good output. Our goal is going to be to try and come up with good thetas. Thetas that are the best approximation we can get to determine y hat that's close to y. So the other input we have here is y. Let's relabel this slightly. So we've got f that gets computed on x and theta. It comes up with our y hat. We've got our y. And then what we do is we say, how good is this y compared to this y hat, right? How good a job did this function do in approximating y? So I'm going to run this through a loss function. A loss function is going to basically measure how good is this. How good, given this x for this particular theta, did f do at approximating y? If y and y hat are equal, our loss should be zero. If y and y hat are big, our loss should become larger. So as y hat differs from y, our loss should be giver, bigger. We get to determine this loss function. Just like we also get to determine f here. That is, we get to determine what kind of a function this is, what kind of input it takes, what kind of output it generates, uh, how it's parameterized in terms of these weights. And then what we do is we take this loss function and we say, OK, out of here, we have a loss. We are going to feed this into an optimizer. And the optimizer's job is going to be to update theta. So it updates theta to make theta better. To begin with, what theta start at? We normally actually just pick random numbers. Okay, so we pick there's, there's some uh, things we have to do, but we'll normally just pick random numbers. So we'll say basically, how well does f do to begin with? On the first try, probably really cruddy. So we look at y hat and y, they're probably far apart. We look at the loss function, we take the loss, which is large, large. we feed in the optimizer, and the optimizer, in a way we haven't specified yet, is going to make a small step towards improving theta. Okay, not a lot, just a small step, and we feed that in. And now we feed in more x's and y's. Okay? So the x's and y's come here as a matched set, right? x and y are in our training data set. So x is coming in here, y is coming in here. This is the basics of neural network. Okay, neural networks, this is uh, called gradient descent. Uh, the, we'll talk at great length about this, but the idea is we do this successive approximation. We start with initial, not very good data at all, and then we evaluate it, tweak it, evaluate it, tweak it. It's a lot like Newton's method for evaluating the roots of a function. So we continually uh, do this process. Now, we have a lot of control over various things as we're designing this. We get to decide f. In particular, we get to decide what kinds of inputs it takes. So in this case here, we might say it's going to take two a point. So an x, uh, 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 a horizontal value, and a vertical value. So it's coming in with two floating point numbers. We get control over the y hats. We'll see that in a moment. 
we actually get control over the why to some extent. We have to, we have to construct these labels, but we get control over how we're deciding that we want to encode the input, how we're encoding the output. We get to decide what sort of a loss function we're going to look at. We get to decide the optimizer. There are a variety of different possible optimizers, and then that updates data, and we run this. How long do we run it? That's part of also what we get to decide. So there's a lot of construction process that we're doing uh, before we start the training process. And then we start the training, and we should see the loss go down over time. This process is what we're going to be using with neural networks. However, we're going to be making one simplifying assumption for the first two or three weeks. And that simplifying assumption is that our universe F here is simple, and that we're just going to be looking at polynomials, sometimes even just linear functions, but polynomials. And the reason for that is because we have a lot of intuitions about polynomials. We can also view them. That's not so easy to do with neural networks. So with neural networks, we don't have any of that intuition. So we're going to learn about loss functions, about theta, about optimizers, about different kinds of loss functions, different kinds of optimizers, all that machinery. And then, once we do that, we'll go ahead and switch from using simple functions like polynomials and actually use neural networks. But the rest of the machinery is just going to kind of work as is.